By denying the essence of their desire, these men and women have renounced all forms of sexuality. They have gone from homosexuality to abstinence. I hate hypocrites. I've always hated hypocrites. People who claim very loudly in the media that they're happy, that they've changed, that they're no longer attracted to the same sex, are not telling the truth. Activist and journalist, Wayne Besson has become the scourge of these groups that he has been following for nearly 30 years. The religious right was starting to fail. More Americans were accepting LGBT people. So the mean-spirited, you're going to hell, uh, you're a disgusting sinner, you're an awful person, that kind of rhetoric was backfiring. And the religious right, around 1998, needed to come up with something that was kinder and gentler and made it appear that they weren't hating LGBT people, they were actually loving them. And the ex-gay ministries was the answer. The ex-gay campaigns all say we are living proof that you can go from gay to straight. Well, I say if you're living proof, I can disprove it. And so if you are saying that you have gone from gay to straight, you better damn well be who you say you are, or we will out you. Yeah, we share the love of the Lord with me. We have outed several of these ex-gays as frauds. When you go undercover and see them in their element, they are sad, they are depressed, they are angry, and they will tell you that they have not completely changed. And every day is a living hell where they're fighting temptation. In recent months, Wayne Besson has posted the guilty testimonies of former therapists on his website. Repentant people who have returned to a homosexual life, they acknowledge that these therapies have never worked on anyone. To the people who are harmed by the toxic theology and stigmatizing views that I once proposed and promoted, I'm very sorry. And if you're angry and you, you can't forgive me, I get it. I'm angry and I can't forgive myself for some things. What have I done? What did I do here? I meant well, but I hurt people. For the children who lost parents, um, those things will never leave me, um, and they're why I do what I do today. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry, um, and I always will be. I used to be a His biggest act was getting Yvette Cantu Schneider's confessions. A charismatic leader, she was the one who exported the anti-gay movement across the country in the 1990s. Each time she preached, she filled stadiums. But now I've been married to a wonderful man for nine years. We have two beautiful daughters. And all I have to say is praise God that he breaks the bondage of sin. Interview part two, okay. the story, <laughs> working. My name's Yvette Cantu Schneider, and I'm an XX gay leader. I've never seen anyone change from gay to straight, ever, ever. You know what I spent my time doing? Dealing with leaders in ex-gay ministries who were having sex with the people who were coming to them for help. And that's when I knew if the leaders, the people who have been chosen to be leaders aren't changing, no one's changing. The main reason I want to interview ex-ex gay leaders is because for the historical record, we need to know what happened. As we see with the change movement, they keep trying to rebrand and reboot and reintroduce themselves, hoping that people have amnesia and forgot the failures of the former leaders. Well, if people go back and look at that, they'll see that all these people that will now tell you a completely different story, and they will tell you what I said was not true. I was wishful thinking packaged in a way that uh, the religious right wanted me to, to do it. In the United States, these conversion therapies have become a moral and political issue at the very heart of the social debate that is tearing the country apart. By supporting them, the most conservative fringe of the country is returning to one of the fundamental principles of American society, freedom. This is done on the pretext of a vision based on religious morality. To me, 
conversion therapy and ex-gay ministries are child abuse. We don't allow people to say, because of my religion, I won't take our child to a doctor. Because, because the Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child, we can beat our child. We don't allow that. Well, we shouldn't allow under the false guise of religious freedom then to allow these ex-gay abusers to harm children. And that is the message we must send to Congress and the rest of this country. Far from these political struggles for the victims, all that remains is to rebuild themselves.